Hello, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be compositing some sand dunes onto a couch. Now this look is inspired by the new Coldplay Up and Up video. Um, definitely go check it out. There's lots of cool things you can do in there, different ideas you can gather from it. And one thing I, I thought would be cool is to put, you know, a big object, something shot with a drone, onto something smaller, like a couch. And so what we end up doing is sand dunes, because we've got sand dunes uh, near where I live, and onto the couch, which is a brown couch, and so it kind of fit. Now the footage of the sand dunes and the footage of the couch are available to download. I've got them both. There's a link in the description where you can just go and download them. The sand dunes were shot with our drone, which is a DJI Phantom 3. And then the shot of the couch was on a slider, but it's a motorized slider. And this is a slider built by a company called SERP. And it's the magic carpet slider plus the motorized, uh, it's called the Genie. And it's a really kind of a cool setup. You have this uh, motorized part of it that you can put on any slider, really. Um, I've got the attachment. I Well, I've got their, their version of the slider. It makes it a little bit easier, but if you already have a slider... Um, you can put it on there and you can control linear movement across the slider. And if you have also a Genie Mini, you can uh, do panning as well. So you can move across the slider and you can pan and you can all control it. It's like a motion control thing. In a recent video I posted, I had a, a shot of me playing chess against myself. Um, and that was used, that was created using this same um, system as well. Definitely check it out. There's a link in the description. Um, I am going to do a full review on the Magic Carpet and the Genie and the Genie Mini by SERP, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, feel free to download this footage I have here so you can follow along, because not everyone has a motorized slider and not everyone has a drone. First off, I have both pieces of footage in here, and I'm going to bring the couch to the bottom, sand dunes on top, and I'm going to scale down the sand dune footage. I'm going to change the opacity a little bit and just kind of stick it where I think it should be. Okay. Now, one thing you will notice is the footage from the drone was moving faster than the footage of the couch. So I need to time remap it in order to make everything fit. Luckily, there's some, there's some kind of landmarks. You can see these, these little rocky patches here on the sand dunes. And uh, what I can do is maybe line those up with part of the couch. All right, so this, this is kind of a Y, upside down Y, right here in the seam between the two pillows. And then what I'm going to do is come in here to Layer, Time, Enable Time Remapping. And then we just go to the end, and we're going to adjust the time remap so it fits. frame okay now since I did time remap this I, I want to do frame blending so if we go to layer frame blending it's set to off right now and there's frame mix and then pixel motion frame mix will just take the two frames that it, when it's created new ones and it'll just fade them together pixel motion will actually create new frames and new pixels uh, it does take longer to render though and you gotta make sure that you turn on frame blending uh, globally as well. But you can see here how you can see every frame moving. And if I turn that off, see how it's kind of stuttery? That's because we're stretching out this footage in order to fit, and so it needs to create new frames in between. Okay, so. As I'm going through this, I realize that I, I want it to move a little bit differently. I want the footage to be bigger. I want the sky to fill all the way to the top. And now that I'm changing things, the scale of it, and kind of the position, I am going to need to re-time map it. Now, let's go in also, and the rotation is a little bit off. Ooh, wrong way. You can see the horizon was just kind of slightly off. All right, so we've got this in the right spot. 
and things are looking pretty good. Now what we want to do next is we need to crop out and cut out the sand dune so it looks like it's on top of the couch. And we're going to be using the mask tracker for lots of this. We're going to be compositing multiple layers because as you can see in the example we've got the sand on top of the pillow which you can see the sky behind it and so we got to do different um, layers that way. I also have the background sky slightly blurred out and I did that because I wanted to give it more of you know like a tilt shift effect like it was almost like a miniature sand dune on top of the couch. So let's we're gonna have to do some copying and what I've discovered that is instead of cropping out the sand dune footage it actually works better to put the couch footage on top of it and crop out the couch footage. It may sound backwards but that's what ended up working better and I think the reason is, is because the couch footage was easier to do mass tracks with because you can see the sand dunes it's all basically one color and the couch there's a lot more texture and things to track. So let's get a mask. Well let's first I'm gonna put this couch footage on top and let's change the opacity so we can see what's going on. And let's grab the mask tool. And what I'm going to do start right about here and I'm gonna do two different masks one for each pillow and let's kind of build what we think a sand dune. I'm going to have to reshape the sand dune because it's actually a lot bigger and I need to make it kind of smaller. And don't worry about going all the way around the pillow because we're going to do that um, in a different mask. Okay, so I just want basically about that much. Now, if I come in here, go to the mask, click on it, then if your tracker window is open, it'll switch over to the mask tracker. If not, you can right click on the mask, hit track mask, bring that up. And there's many different options, position, rotation, scale, all this kind of stuff. But since it's a linear move straight across, um, perspective works very nice um, for this. So I'm gonna do the perspective track and then just hit track forward because I'm at the beginning of the timeline. Okay, now I sped up that track just so we can get through this faster. My computer didn't read the track at that fast, just so you know. And I'm gonna speed up all the tracks just so we can get through this faster. Now, I actually made a mistake and I did it on purpose because this is something that most people would probably do when they're doing mass tracking. Is I went through and I tracked this whole thing and now I'm like, okay, now that I got the track, let's go ahead and get the feathered edge how we want. Now I can feather the edges down here in the mask, but say I want it feathered down here and not feathered up here. Well, I bring that down. I'm like, okay, well, let's do the, right here, the mask feather tool. I can come in here, feather down there, not feather up here, looking good. But when I go to the next, frame it doesn't do it because the mask feather tool actually tool actually applies it to the mask path it's not a separate thing so you actually have to do all of your feathering if you're using that tool before you track the mask so that's just a little bit of a warning to you anytime you're doing any mask tracking and you want to have um, feathering uh, variable feathering well then you need to do all that before but once you get it how you like it, then you do the mask track. All right, let's track this now. Again. All right, we've got this first track done. I need to come in here and mask out some of the sand area. And we can do this with just a simple mask. So we'll grab the pen tool. And this one I'm masking onto the sand dunes footage. But we can just come in, grab the path keyframe, the path, mask path. Okay. Now let's go back onto this top couch and we're gonna do another mask for the second um, cushion. But I'm gonna go to the very end because the cushion is revealed and so I wanna be able to mask the whole thing. So I'm gonna go to the end and mask and track backwards.
All right, next up, we need to track the uh, pillow. So we're gonna take this couch layer, duplicate it. Let's rename that to pillow. Because I want this on a separate layer. Now let's we'll come into these masks and go ahead and delete both of those. We don't need them. And let's come in and mask around the pillow. Make sure you get a nice tight mask on this. We aren't going to be doing much um, feathering. So you can't hide a bad mask by adding a lot of feather. All right. Now let's go in and just keyframe the beginning and the ending of this. Remember I use a motorized slider, so it should be a nice steady movement. There is going to be some perspective shift, but I think I can fix that by just changing the scale. And so to do that with a mask path, you highlight mask path. And if you hit command or control T, well, then it's going to open up the free transform for that path. And I can just move the whole thing. And I can also scale the mask. See how I'm stretching it out that way? Okay. Now, I said I was going to do be doing a lot of compositing. And since we have this pillow on top, so you can see the sky behind the pillow. I actually do want to feather, just this, feather this just a tiny bit. Let's try... 2 and then the expansion negative 1.5 that's looking pretty good we need to now have some sand on top of the pillow because remember we were doing everything to the pillows on top so let's take the sand dunes duplicate it bring it to the front bring the opacity down and let's come in here and make a sand dune again I'm going to have to change um, from add to intersect because we already had a mask on this layer. We actually, actually can take that whole mask off, that top mask, because we just need this area right here. So take it off or you can make it intersect. Change the feather on this to a couple of pixels. Let's bring the opacity back. Let's come into this path again. and We're going to track backwards. Now I like to do everything in multiple tracks because things kind of move differently because of the parallax. And so lots of little chunks uh, seem to work out a little bit better. All right, next thing we need to do is to track, uh, to mask out some of the sky so it blends into the background. And what we're gonna use is this couch layer that's above this sand dunes layer. So let's come in here and we're going to just do a square mask and we're looking at these lines so this kind of line that's where I'm going to keep the mask because I'm going to just keyframe this by hand keyframe the beginning okay now that I got the basic movements I'm going to come in here and make this a lot bigger on this side and on top because I'm going to feather the whole thing and if it was too close to the edges well then it would it would feather on because it feathers it on every single side is the thing okay looking pretty good now we've got these two little guys here on the sand dunes and they are now behind the pillow. So let's come in and we need to duplicate those guys. So here's this sand dune layer we can, that's already in front. We can duplicate that. Let's go into the masks. Take off the mask that's there. And let's draw a mask around them. And then at the end, we're going to need to move that mask. So just a quick keyframe with that. And in order to make it so they kind of pop out, we can just do an extract filter. Um, 
there's pretty much there's a lot of light value to this, so we can key them out using extract. All right, now we can end it here, but I want to do one last thing, and I had talked about it at the beginning, is I want to blur out the background as if this was like a tilt shift effect. And in order to do that, you can't just um, do a mask on a blur. You need to use a compound blur. And with compound blur, you need to have a blur map that goes into it. So we need to create that blur map. Um, let's grab a new solid just any color will do. And to this, we're gonna add a gradient ramp. Swap the colors, we want light on top. And let's bring the opacity down so we can see what we're doing. And bring the top down to about the horizon line. And then the bottom, somewhere right around there. And what we're gonna do is we're going to pre-compose this. So Command-Shift-C or Control-Shift-C and make sure that you move all the attributes. Let's give it a name, blur map. Let's go ahead and throw this to the bottom. We don't need it at all um, to be visible. And then let's come to the sand dunes, this lower level one, the one that has the background. Should have labeled these a little bit better, but that's okay. Um, the, this one down near the bottom and let's go to the effects. Blur and sharpen. Now you can do a camera lens blur or you can do a compound blur. The camera lens blur is going to end up looking a little bit nicer. There's lots of features, but it's a little bit harder to render. Not directional blur. Compound blur. And so compound blur is kind of like camera lens blur, but it's a little bit uh, a lighter weight one. So let's come to compound blur and add the blur map to it. And then what that's going to do is it's going to blur it more the further away it is. So if I come into this blur map, and make like a hard line right here where we can see, you can see, not blurry, blurry. Okay, so that's the tutorial. Hope you learned a lot. And um, really, it's just lots of masking and tracking and kind of compositing things together. Um, hopefully, it wasn't too confusing. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. And stay tuned for my next video using the SERP um, Genie, um, which would be the, the chess one where I'm playing chess against myself. Um, really fun. And again, that one I'm going to have um, some footage for you to download as well. Thank you so much for watching, and if you haven't done so, consider subscribing to the channel. I put out uh, tutorials often about After Effects and other video production type things. So, we'll see you next time.